Hello, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle's exact whereabouts for Christmas were unknown, and it's unlikely that fans will ever really know the details of their holiday with baby Archie. That includes the specifics of the gifts they got for one another, but fans believe Markle may have hinted at some Christmas gift ideas. The Sussexes took a break from the royal family tradition. Prince Harry and Markle decided to change their holiday plans and, rather than spend Christmas with Queen Elizabeth and other members of the royal family, they instead took a more relaxing approach to the holiday. Buckingham Palace initially confirmed the rumors that they wouldn't spend the holiday with the Queen, releasing a statement in November that noted, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex are looking forward to extended family time towards the end of this month. Having spent the last two Christmases at Sandringham, their royal highnesses will spend the holiday this year as a new family with the Duchess mother Doria Radland. The statement further relayed that the Queen was fine with their plan, noting, this decision is in line with precedent set previously by other members of the royal family and has the support of Her Majesty the Queen. Did the Sussexes skip the Christmas tradition because of Archie? Naturally, there were plenty of rumors swirling about why Prince Harry and Markle would skip the royal festivities, with one of the more logical theories having to do with their son Archie. Royal expert Omnid Scabi pointed out that the children who come to the Christmas gathering are typically separated from the adults for parts of the day. Prince Harry and Markle reportedly would rather spend the time with the baby. When a CBC reporter remarked to Scabi that he could not imagine taking the baby away from family at this time, the royal expert shared, you have to remember Sandringham is quite a formal affair. On Christmas Day, when the family gets together for Christmas lunch, children are separate from the parents. He continued, they have their own celebration in the royal nursery, so they wouldn't have got to spend as much time with Archie as perhaps they would have liked. What did Markle get Prince Harry for Christmas? The details of their Christmas have been kept quiet, as they should be, but some royal fans think they figured out what Markle got Prince Harry for a gift. Fans believe that the Duchess hinted at the perfect gift idea for the guy who is everything when she wrote in her now. Defunct lifestyle blog the take about how to be creative with Christmas presents. She wrote, it's easy to grab another t-shirt for your man, but you'll likely steal it for PJs anyway. Instead, give him something creative that he'll actually enjoy like these little gems. Marco provided a number of options that would make great gifts, such as a box set of colorful socks, a Crossley radio turntable, or a Brookstone pocket projector to display photos. Prince Harry likely has everything he could ever want, and the quiet time with his wife and son were the perfect gift after a stress-filled year in the spotlight. Prince Harry is seen in the new year with Meghan and baby Archie at a $1.4 million waterfront mansion in Canada, understood to belong to a Russian oligarch. The Duchess of Sussex's mom Doria is joining the royal trio along with the royal protection team, who are staying in a cottage in the grounds. The property is believed to be owned by a powerful Russian businessman who is so secretive that he insisted the estate agent handling his purchase sign a non-disclosure agreement. And it has everything a modern royal could desire, the gourmet kitchen is fitted with the top-of-the-range pizza oven, perfect for Harry, who has spoken of his love for a deep dish and thin crust. One local, who runs a deli close to the sprawling home in British Columbia, told LMT Royal, we know that it's owned by a Russian businessman, but he's never around. Another told us, it's an incredible property and one of the most prestigious around here. I wasn't surprised when I found out Harry and Meghan are staying there. It's certainly fit for royalty. LMT Royal has decided not to reveal the location of the royal couple's holiday home. 
Built just over a decade ago in several acres of manicured grounds, the estate was described by one previous visitor as a sanctuary, rather than simply a home. The rooms of the main house alone cover more than 10,000 square feet, almost half as big again as Love Island summer complex on Mallorca, as well as a wealth of opulent bedrooms, multiple bathrooms, and a formal dining room. It has a games room with wet bar, a media room, and even a wine tasting room. The two-story living room has spectacular sunset views, looking across a magnificent stretch of water. And despite being relatively new, there is even a 17th-century French fireplace imported specially from Europe. The guest cottage in the grounds adds more than 2,000 square feet of indoor space, and there is also a luxury summer house. The Duke and Duchess, celebrating seven-month-old Archie's first Christmas, are understood to have arrived at the property 11 days ago and are expected to stay until Friday. The region on Canada's west coast was a favorite of Harry's mother, Princess Diana, who admired its rugged beauty. But despite their luxury accommodation, Harry and Meghan ate out on Christmas Day, taking a private suite at a nearby VIP resort, with caterers they hired just for the day. An insider at the upmarket retreat, where the eco-conscious couple were seen arriving in a parade of 4x4s said, the high-end caterers were called in to supply the lunch, which included vegetarian options, right at the last minute. There were 10 to 15 people in the suite, including their security detail. A fleet of SUVs was outside the resort, which the group had used, including Range Rovers. And as well as security from England, there were also members of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police there too. The couple's British security detail for the trip is paid for by the taxpayer. The source revealed that, during the lunch, talk had turned to how the group should go for afternoon tea at a hotel, once visited by both Harry's father, Prince Charles, and his grandmother, the Queen. The source added, Harry and Meghan laughed about it. They wanted to go there, but it was thought to be too public at this time of year. The couple had needed to change their Christmas Day plans at short notice after another restaurant turned down their reservation due to the tight security required. And while Prince William, Kate and their eldest children George, 6, and Charlotte, 4, greeted crowds at Sandringham on Christmas Day along with other royals, Harry and Meghan were instead spotted taking Archie for a quiet family stroll in nearby Parkland. A dog walker who passed them said, I saw them on one of the trails. They were with three security men. I saw the security men first, I just thought to myself how unusual it was. It is unclear who footed the bill for the Christmas Day lunch, or who is paying for the couple's luxury stay, estimated to cost as much as $65,000 a month. Asked about the Christmas Day meal, a manager at the unnamed resort said, there is no comment. Prince Harry and Meghan are set to throw a party at their luxury mansion on New Year's Day. But they still may not see the kitchen, they are planning to feed guests using the same private catering firm who cooked for them on Christmas Day. Since she first began dating Prince Harry in 2016, Duchess Meghan Markle has been the subject of both praise and ridicule. The former actress left behind her life as she knew it, and her hit drama series, Suits to Marry into the British Royal Family. It has certainly been a whirlwind. Though most people view the Duchess of Sussex as a bright and welcoming spot to the traditional and somewhat stuffy royal family, some Britons and the British press have not made it easy for Markle to adjust to her new role and level of fame. The Duchess mix, race heritage and her advocacy has been a subject of disdain and ridicule, though Markle has her mother, Doria Ragland, and a close, knit group of friends that include Serena Williams and Julia Mulroney, her estranged paternal side including her father, Thomas Markle, and her half siblings have been eager to drag the Duchess down. 
Here's a look at what we know about Markle's family. This is how Meghan Markle's parents met. The Duchess of Sussex is the only child of Doria Ragland, a 63-year-old African-American woman who is a former social worker and yoga instructor, and Thomas Markle, a white man who is a former television director of photography and lighting director. The pair met in the 1980s when they both worked on the set of General Hospital. Ragland was working as a makeup artist. Thomas Markle already had two children from a previous relationship. The pair divorced when the Duchess was just six years old. Meghan Markle's maternal side Not much is known about Doria Ragland's side of the family. Ragland was born in Cleveland, Ohio to Jeanette, Arnold, and Alvin Azel Ragland. Ragland's parents divorced when she was young and her father remarried, Ava Burrow, a kindergarten teacher. Though Burrow's relationship to Ragland's father ended in divorce, she remained close to Doria Ragland. Doria's mother remarried Joseph Johnson and went on to have two children, Joshua Jr. and Sandra Johnson. Ragland also has a paternal half-brother, Joffrey Ragland. Meghan Markle's paternal side The Duchess' 75-year-old father, Thomas Markle, was born in Newport, Pennsylvania to Doris, May Rita and Gordon Arnold Markle. Prior to marrying Ragland, he wed student and secretary, Rosalind Loveless, in 1964. The pair had the Duchess half, siblings, Samantha and Thomas Markle Jr., before divorcing in 1975. Markle has never been close to her older siblings, and in their frenzy to grab checks by speaking about her in the media, that's become quite clear. They've called the Duchess everything from callous, a disgrace, and shameful. Unfortunately, it looks like Markle has had to cut ties with her paternal side forever. Her father published a very person letter that the Duchess wrote to him in newspaper. It read, If you love me, as you tell the press you do, please stop, she wrote. Please allow us to live our lives in peace. Please stop lying, please stop creating so much pain, please stop exploiting my relationship with my husband. I realize you are so far down this rabbit hole that you feel or may feel there's no way out, but if you take a moment to pause I think you'll see that being able to live with a clear conscience is more valuable than any. Don't stop.